So let's recap what we have so far. So what we have so far is number one in your process is to have your domain, which is presented by that irregular shape here. Number two, you set up your, uh, number two, you select your models, right? This is the governing equation, which most of the time is gonna be uh, partial differential equations, right? You selected the model to describe your uh, process if you are picking up the heat transfer problem, a fluid flow problem. Number three, you set up your uh, boundary conditions. And uh, maybe four should come before three is your mesh or grid. So, so far, I have the boundary condition known. I discretized my domain into subdomains, ending up having what we call the nodes, right? Then I know what's my governing equation uh, for that system. So these are what these are the steps that we covered before. Now <clears throat> we need to start getting into the solving the problem. Uh, again, let's assume that you are setting different temperature at the boundary. You want to get the temperature inside that domain. So the next step would be actually uh, people call that discretization, but I still consider uh, mesh and grading is part of that this discretization. Disc discretization. Uh, process, excuse me, but it's it's up to you. If you want to consider meshing and gridding as part of the discretization, that's okay. Some books are considering that. Others, they said, no, discretization is a standalone process that follow the meshing or gridding. So uh, what's discret discretization actually do? Discretization is actually converting a continuous domain differential equation. So the differential equation give you a continuous function over that domain. I will take that differential equation, which is the governing equation or the model that you select for that problem, and you're going to convert that into a algebraic equations. In most cases, it's a, a system of linear equation. Not, not the case all the time, but this is what we're going to do. Then you solve this equation numerically, right? So the conversion process is what we call discretization. That's, that's the main job of the discretization. Uh, discretization will happen to provide equation for each node within your domain. So if your domain has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. If you have 25 nodes, you end up having a 25 equations each node is presented by uh, one equation, okay? Uh, that, that's why discretization is an approximation of the continuous differential equation that applies to your domain. For example, for that two-dimension problem, you may end up having T as a function of uh, x and y, it's equal to 2x squared plus 3y squared plus 10. So if you set up x and y, you can get you can get the coordinate of each point within that domain, any location, right? You can go and substitute into the equation and you get your solution. This is the real solution. This is the continuous function over that domain. When we do the discretization, you will end up only having the value of the temperature at these specific nodes, which means that if you want to get closer and closer to the actual solution, you have to make your mesh super fine to have nodes close to each other, right? Then you can get the temperature at most of the location. Again, it's not going to be 100% matching what the continuous demand function is giving you. 
But also keep in mind, we are trying to get an approximation. Maybe we don't know, we don't need necessarily to get the temperature at each point like this. If you are doing the the outer uh, phase of a rocket going to space, and NASA is conducting that, yeah, maybe they will need to solve that equation with the uh, the continuous function. Or if they cannot solve the differential equation due to math limitation, they will do very fine mesh, and they have the computational capability to do that, right? But According to our applications, we're looking for an approximation solution. That's why we will end up having error, right? We will have error in our solution. And we will not get really the function at each point, but we will get enough data for enough number of nodes that tell us what is the status of that problem or what's our expectation for that problem, okay? For example, if you're looking for a specific domain, a plate type, and you are hitting this guy and you wanna see are you approaching a maximum temperature somewhere into that domain? Maybe getting these temperatures is telling you, oh, this is our temperature distribution. The maximum value here is like 2000 degrees. The, the critical temperature that you need to avoid is like 3000 degrees. Yeah, we are far enough from that melting point. So your domain could be, uh, uh, okay, you can you can do that problem in, in practical, doing experience, whatever. Uh, okay. So that, that's that's the definition of discretization is to approximate your continuous domain into a series of algebraic equations. Then you solve that numerically uh, to get an approximation solution. Uh, so that's the definition of uh, discretization. Three major uh, methods we are using. So this is discretization. There are three famous techniques or methods we are using to convert these differential equation into algebraic equation. The first one is the finite difference method. FDM. The second one is finite element method F E M and the third one is finite volume method which is F V M and this is supposed to be the focus of this course or this series of uh, recordings uh, but finite difference is very important as well so finite difference will give you the sensation of the process, but we will focus after that on the finite volume uh, method. But these are the general one. Finite element is out of the scope of uh, this discussion here. It's mostly used by uh, for the people doing structural uh, analysis, uh, looking for stress and strain and uh, deformation and stuff like that. But for uh, load flow and heat transfer, uh, we love the finite volume method for many reasons when we come to discuss about it, it's just, it's saving your memory, it's memori it's minimize your computational cost because it, the number of cores you need to solve these problems is much uh, less compared to the finite element method. It's just the way of handling the data for these nodes and solving the uh, the uh, numerical schemes that we are using, it's really make things much easier and faster uh, compared to the finite element uh, method. So this is just the beginning of the discretization. Uh, let, let me give you a sensation of how you distinguish between the three methods in a very simple example here. So let's assume that we have a continuous domain function like this. So we have a function f of x over that domain. And the as you see, it's a continuous function here, right? That's get, coming from the uh, analytical solution or it's already exists, but whatever, it's continuous domain function. So we would like to approximate that function using the finite difference method, finite element method, and finite volume method. So the first step is to, here's my domain. I have the function. Uh, I would like to, uh, number one, do the discretization now. So which means that I have to do the grading or meshing. So I will divide my domain into uh, subdomains. So let's assume I came like this. That's my sub subdomain here. So this is the uh, grid size, H, right? And I divided my domain into equal subdomains. 
So now I, I did that. Um, I would like to approximate that function. The first method to approximate the function is the finite difference method. So if you apply the finite difference method, what are you going to get as an approximation? Finite difference method is only capable of capturing data at the boundary of the grid, which means that the only data that you will get out of that function is this point, 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 and this point. This is boundary condition, right? This is boundary condition. This is also a boundary condition, okay? But the approximation that when you apply the finite difference method, you will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven data. Uh, let's assume this is temperature distribution. You'll get seven seven values of temperatures. So the downside of the finite difference method is doesn't give you information inside each grid element itself or subdomain. Just give you the value, but it doesn't reflect what's happening within that element, right? It gives you the boundaries of the element temperature, but it doesn't show the behavior of the function inside, okay? So that's that's the finite difference method here. So you will see something like this. You will get boundary condition, boundary condition, then you get the values here. So for example, if, if this is your x-axis and each value is 0.1 meter, so, and the total length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so that's L is equal 0.8 meter, then I ask you, what is the temperature at distance x equal uh, 0.5? So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, you will get the temperature at 0.5. What's the temperature at x equal 0.6? You will have the value at x 0.6. But if I told you, what is the temperature at 0 0.5, at distance 0.55, finite difference doesn't provide that. You may consider, okay, I will take the average of this one and this one. So there's further steps you have to do with a finite difference method. So we apply finite difference method only when we would like to get the information at the grid point, but it doesn't tell you the behavior of the function within each subdomain itself. That's the finite difference method, okay? Now, let's look to the finite element. Again, this is a domain and we have to discretize the domain. Then you get a clean piece of paper here. So here is, this is again the discretized domain. Now I would like to look into the finite element method. Let me label that finite difference. Okay, that's a finite element method. Okay, how the finite element method will capture? Finite element method, that it gives you, for each subdomain, it gives you the behavior of the function in a linear format. So what's happening is it will take this data and presenting these data by a linear function. So it's gonna approximate this piece. It's gonna give you piecewise function consists of a series of linear approximation for each subdomain. So it will uh, approximate that behavior into uh, a linear uh, function. Then it will do that with the second portion and it will give you that for uh, a third portion. It gives you another line for the fourth per uh, portion. So a series of linear approximation that fits, you can tell that the line is showing the behavior, right? The function is going up, the slope is going up, the function is going down, the slope is going down, function is going down again, it's gonna give you a negative slope linear uh, fit and, and so on. So you end up having a series of linear equations that describes the, uh, the behavior of that function in each subdomain. Uh, finite element method can give you discontinuous piecewise function. So this one and this one and this one, they are not corrected. In other ab approximation, you can get actually a continuous piecewise function, and depending on how you apply that finite different finite element uh, method. So you, you may end up having something like this, uh, non-continuous or discrete linear equations over intervals, right? Like this, or you may end up having continuous uh, piecewise linear function here like this. So there is a way you can actually 
connect these piecewise functions. So this kind of give you uh, a continuous function over the domain, but remember, it's all approximated by linear. So for example, this is not really showing the behavior here and the behavior here or the behavior here or the fluctuation of the behavior here. It goes up and down. It's continuously going up here because the overall trend of that portion is like increasing. So again, it's an approximation, but it's much better compared to the finite difference method because it's giving you data all over the domain if you use the continuous linear equation uh, between the grid points, or it's give you uh, data within the subdomains uh, in discrete uh, uh, function like this. So finite element is really improving the prediction or the approximation of the continuous domain, domain right? Uh, the third method is the finite volume method. So finite volume method is very uh, straightforward because it's in a simple language. It takes an average value over the volume of the element. Okay? So it's looking for the function variation within the element. This is the original function. Then it takes an average value. And it gives you a constant value over that element here, 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 here. You can see that it's, again, it's a, a piecewise function. It's not continuous function, but it's average over the volume of that element. That's how the finite volume method works. And because it's only doesn't need to do a, you know, a, a fitting of the data over that subdomain into a linear function, it just take an average of that function. It's it's do that very quickly. It's solved quicker compared to the finite element uh, method. So it's a it's an average value, uh, but it doesn't provide any data at the node itself. But from the average value, you can assume that uh, at this element, this is the value at the boundary here. At this element, this is the value of the boundary, and so on. So it's a simple averaging of the function, continuous function over each subdomain itself. So this is simply the difference between the uh, finite difference method, finite element method, and finite volume method. It's just a way of capturing capturing the data from the continuous domain function. If you are dealing with finite difference method, you will capture the uh, the data at the nodes, at the boundaries of the subdomains. If you are dealing with finite element, there are multiple ways you can get piecewise function uh, in continuous or continuous, right? That's a continuous one. Or if you are dealing with a finite volume method, you can just get the average value uh, over the domain. Uh, now we will, uh, looking forward in the next step onto the uh, finite difference method and do very simple examples before we jump into the big talk about the finite volume method. Just to refresh your memory, if you took a heat transfer course, numerical approach of solving uh, uh, heat conduction problems, stuff like that, it should be covered, but I'm sure some of you doesn't touch base with that. So I would like to review that finite difference method, uh, showing the level of error you can get in finite difference method before we jump into the finite volume, which is uh, the, the big talk uh, approximation that we will look in. Uh, see you with the uh, finite difference one. So let's start that part. <laughs>